Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the real scriptures, the true scriptures, <clears throat> and turn in your King James scriptures to the book of John, chapter 2. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 11. Context. Okay? Get the scriptures. Follow me along in the scriptures. This is um, going to be a little, this is going to be kind of interesting. This is not as detailed as it could be. But, I'm answering a question. Tried to get a hold of this brother to to go over with uh, go over this with him privately, not because it was a matter of anything between us or anything like that. I just wanted to talk to this brother um, to have some fellowship with him and go over the scriptures together. That you know kind of thing. Uh, couldn't get a hold of him, and I'm a man of my word. So, <clears throat> John chapter two. Verses 1 under verse 11. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Now, Catholics said that Jesus never said no to his mother, right? But watch this. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Hinge that. Remember that, okay? His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there is set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, hmm. Hmm. Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. He performed this miracle. When he even said to his mother, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Let's continue from verse 9 on to verse 11. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him manifested his glory. It says right there, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. Beginning. What is the beginning? We get that, right? We also have to note <clears throat> that this is after the baptism of Jesus where he was publicly identified as the Messiah, the anointed one. That is what Christ means, anointed. Okay? So, God manifest in the flesh, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, was publicly identified as the Messiah. Here I am. Here's the king. Okay? Hi, I am here. I am here. Okay? That's what his uh, water baptism was about. I have an old video. Uh, addressing that. I may find it and put it in the link in the description box. I may. But, this is after his identification as, here I am, the king is here, okay? 
But it says here, this is in verse 11, This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Look at verse 4 again. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Now, like I said, Catholics like to say he never said no to his mother, but yet he did the miracle, right? Look in verse 9. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Skip down to verse 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. See, the governor of the feast, he didn't know. All he knew was that the Lord made some pretty good wine. Okay? And, you know, went past the process of fermentation. But just like that. Look at, look at verses 7 and 8. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. Like, go ahead. Fill the water pots with water. Of course, there was no pride in our Lord Jesus Christ. Pride is sin. And God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, cannot sin. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. For God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, You kind of get the impression this was a nothing miracle to him. Meaning, okay, is anything too hard for the Lord? No. Some of you might think so. But there again, are you asking according to his will or for your will to want? Huh? Go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. <clears throat> we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 9. John chapter 7 verses 1 on to verse 9. After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren, Jesus had brothers. Mary had other children. Catholic, she was not a perpetual virgin. Did then catechism say that after that, uh, Joseph never knew his wife Mary. But they, they even go as far as to say that it was another Mary. <laughs> the depths that the Catholics will go to pervert the Word of God to fit their cause. <clears throat> that's why, that's why, brethren, it's okay to hate Catholicism. Not the Catholic per se. No. But the religion of Catholicism, <clears throat> it's okay to hate it. Because it hates our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's continue. <clears throat> His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, shew thyself to the world. Verse 5. For neither did his brethren believe in him. His brethren didn't believe in him. Trust him.
do you think? Roll this around in your head a little bit. You know, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, you know he gets angry, right? If you say that God doesn't get angry, only the God of the Old Testament, um, you, you need to really search the scriptures and see if you are saved and even know who God is. <clears throat> and again, I gotta say this very quickly. If you're a Trinitarian, you don't know who God is. Sorry. Which one is he? Never mind. Verse 6. <clears throat> then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. Note this verse. Note this verse. Note it. Hinge it. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. Right there in verse 8, I go not up yet. Modern Bible perversions. Most of them take out yet there. And make God a liar. Uh, in the modern, hold on, let me show you. <clears throat> let me show you. Hey, yeah, yeah. I have in my hands, uh, brethren, a <laughs> new revised standard version. <laughs> See? See that? Yeah. Yeah. New Revised Standard Version. An openly ecumenical Bible. Here is verse 8 in the New Revised Standard Version. Go to the festival, festival yourselves. I am not going to this festival. For my time has not yet full come. After saying this, he remained in Galilee. Go ye up unto this feast, I go not up yet unto this feast. For my time is not yet full come. Here in the New Revised Standard Version, this is based off of the Alexandrian manuscripts. It says, Go to the festival yourselves. I am not going to this festival. And see here, in this piece of garbage, they have this right here. They put a little thing there. Right there. You see that? Where my finger is? See that? Yeah. So, imagine that a... Catholic Bible makes Jesus a liar. If you don't know anything about the Bible version issue, these are scriptures. Okay? If you don't know anything about it, I got a few videos on that on my channel here, so go check them out if you're curious. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 9. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Now, like I told you, remember, John 7, 6. We're going to come back to this. Okay, but now, look at verse 30. Ah, uh, let's see. No, actually... Let's go from verse 25 on to verse 31, okay? 25 on to verse 31. 
Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? He went to the feast. But it says there in verse 8 that I go not up yet. That Bible <laughs> makes Jesus a liar. Okay? He went up. He didn't go yet. Because for my time is not yet full come. Then said they, uh, jumping over to verse 25, Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Albeit we know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. That's a that's an interesting statement that they make there. What they mean, what that means is, they knew where Jesus Christ came from, but whence he is, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh, that he came from heaven and dwelt amongst his own, and his own received him not. See, when they say, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. That's right. They didn't know from whence he is. Did they? As prophesied also in Isaiah 53, and also in the latter parts of Isaiah 52. Check that out on your own time. Okay, let's continue. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, right here, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. He answered it right there. And I am come, I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. Verse 27, Howbeit we know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. And, look at verse 28, Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am, circle that, from him, and he has sent me. <clears throat> then they sought to take him. But no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him. And said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than, than these which this man hath done? Now, let's check this so far. Okay, so far. John chapter 2 verse 4. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. John chapter 7 verse 8. Go ye up unto this feast, I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. Look at verse 6 again. Hinge verse 6. We're going to come back to that, but let's read that again. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. And right here, verse 30. In John chapter 7, Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. Hmm. Hmm. Let's have the scriptures answer this for us, shall we? Alright, go now to John chapter 12, verses 23, on to verse 36. Okay? John chapter 12, verses 23 on to verse 36. Go there, of course. <clears throat> and Jesus answered them, saying, 
The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Already addressed the Son of Man, Son of God, Son of David thing in the Trinity is Catholic video. Go check that out, okay? <clears throat> verily, verily, I say unto you, except a, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. You know, in comparison to those who are out there who would kill me to have my problems, literally, and those who would kill you to have your problems, Don't you want to get out of here? <laughs> I, I was talking with a brother before this video, and he's like, he, he said, we're, we're getting out of here in the spring. Amen. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I really do. I really do. I hope that, I mean, in reality, the catching away could happen at any second. Do you? Look at me. Church of the living God. Do you really believe that? Do you? What if? What if we're, I'm sitting here, you're sitting there, and all of a sudden... Oh boy. And it's not going to be this, hey, Jesus, and give you a bro. No. If, you don't, if you are of the Church of the Living God, you're sealed unto the day of redemption, and you're going to the judgment seat of Christ. Do you really think when you finally get to see the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that you're going to be this happy-go-lucky. <laughs> oh, I know, I got me some good things coming. You, you, you got to screw loose up here. If you think that. You really do. I, I, I love you, but you, you, you got to screw loose. In the book of Revelation, when John fell at his feet as dead, Yeah, that would be a college reunion or whatever. Big bro hug. <laughs> Give me a break. Give me a break. Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, the I am's, especially in the book of John, are always noteworthy. And I personally recommend unto you, my brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Uh, when you next time you go through the Book of John, by the way, take one of these and circle it. If you don't like marking in your Bible, totally understand that. At, at least write it down on a piece of paper. How many times Jesus associates "I am," "I am." Do it. Go ahead. Let's continue. Verse twenty-six. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause... Came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven. See, God 
God the Father is in heaven, but God the Father is the soul of the Godhead. Why you people can't figure that out, I do not know. Okay? Alright? I, I don't understand why you can't figure that out. Some of you, because you're too ingrained in Catholic doctrine. I, that Yeah, that we get. But, uh, yes, yes. The soul of Jesus Christ is God the Father. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? So, he says, Father, glorify thy name. What name? Jesus Christ. One name. Under heaven. Given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Okay? Gone, already gone through this plenty of times now. So we're not going to go over it. By now, you ought to get the point. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said, an angel spake to him. I like to think uh, when the catching away happens, we're going to hear our name, and be called up, come up hither. But those who are not saved, it's like, what was that? It sounded like a clap of thunder. That's just me. Verse 30, Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Huh? Huh? Oh, 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 oh. Hold up, hold up. Go back now. You, you know where we're going, right? John chapter 7. Go back. Go back. Verses 27 and 28. Okay? John 7, verses 27 and 28. How be it, we know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. Verse 34 in John chapter 12 again. Sorry, I didn't get this camera thing going. Okay. <clears throat> the people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? God, the Father, God manifest in the flesh. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. All right, now look at John 13, verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when John knew that his hour was, uh, when Jesus, I'm sorry, pick your pardon, let's read, let's reread that. <laughs> ay, 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 pick your pardon, okay. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
Look at that. When Jesus knew that his hour is come. Go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Come on, work with me. Come on. You're probably already there. Good. <laughs> Good, okay. Luke chapter 22, verses 23, on to verse 36. Luke, oh, excuse me. Luke 22, verses 31, on to verse 37. Beg your pardon. I'm just looking at the wrong notes. Beg your pardon. Luke 22, verses 31, on to verse 37. Note this. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, Strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Pope Peter, <clears throat> the cock shall not... <laughs> okay, sorry. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before, thy, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Why is that? Because the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, was on the earth. As king. See. That's why. When I sent you without purse and script and shoes. Lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Because the king was there. Then said he unto them. But now. The king is leaving. He that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. Now, we know that Jesus will be coming back at his second coming. That we, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, will be caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes. For the things concerning me have an end. Verse 35. He said that because as king, he would provide for them as they need. The Lord will provide for what we need today, yes, but he as king, son of David, king, referring to himself that he would provide for them as their king. But now, verse 36, he's about to fulfill his hour. For the things concerning me have an end. Now, go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. You remember what I told you to hinge, right? 2 Timothy. We're not going to go there yet. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2, verses 19 
on to verse 26. 2 Timothy 2, verses 19 on to verse 26. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth and some to honor, and some to dishonor. Gold and silver can abide fire. They, yeah, they will melt, of course, but they are refined by fire, and the dross lifts up. Okay, they're not disintegrated. Okay? Wood and earth, where wood burns up, and earth can become parched and scorched. Okay? And some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. But now, flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, self-sacrifice. Peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. A pure heart. A heart that loves, truly loves the Lord. Are you looking at that? Yeah. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender stripes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patience, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them belief to the acknowledging of the truth, I beg your pardon, I had to. <laughs> ah, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, or are taken captive by him at his will. John 13, John 13, verses 18 on to 20. John 13, verses 18 on to verse 20. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. Now that's not talking about the Calvinistic predestination. God chooses this guy to go to heaven, this guy to go to hell. No. No. He's specifically referring to the son of perdition, Judas Iscariot. Let's continue. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture might be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come to pass, uh, I, I, now I tell you before it come, beg your pardon, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that 
I am he. Or he's talking about just the Messiah. Don't get me started on that. Don't get me started. No. I am he. The Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth me, I uh, beg your pardon, forgive me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Now, thank you, pardon, brethren. One second, please. Sorry about that, brethren. Sorry about that. I had to pause it there. All righty. All right. We were in John 13, 8, 18 on to 20, okay? Talking about the sun perdition. Go back now to Luke 22. Not Malachi, Brad. Luke 22, verse 53. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. The power of darkness. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Come on. Come on, work with me. John chapter 7, remember that verse I told you to hinge? John chapter 7, verse 6. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, for your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. His own brethren didn't believe in him. And he says, but your time is always ready. Go to Romans chapter 5 now. Romans chapter 5. Verses 6 on to verse 11. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly in due time. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall, have, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Romans 13, verses 11 on to verse 14. And knowing, and that Knowing the time, that now is the high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. 
Catching away the body of Christ is nearer than we believe. Again, Church of the Living God. Do you believe that? See, this is their hour and the power of darkness. Jesus, was, the hour where, that Jesus kept referring to was when he went to the cross to make an atonement for our sins. That's why we looked at Romans chapter 5. Let's continue. Verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 1 and 2. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of our God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. Are you really saved? Search the scriptures. Examine yourself. You don't examine yourself by looking at someone else. <laughs> You examine yourself according to the scriptures. How are you doing it? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, lowercase s, that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Children of wrath, even as others. You're a child of wrath if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, if you reject the gospel. God's love is not for you. His wrath is for you. <clears throat> but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'll let you figure that one out yourself, okay? <laughs> that in the ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace 
in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him... We both have access by one Spirit, capital S, unto the Father. And the Lord is that Spirit. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the capital S Spirit. In Ephesians 5, 8, on to verse 16. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the spirit, ah, excuse me, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. <laughs> and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather prove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Let's read verse 17. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. When Jesus says, mine hour had not yet, my hour has not yet come, it was talking about when he would die on the cross and pay for our sins.
when he would be glorified. And also, when they came to get Jesus, he said to them, but this is your hour, and the power of darkness. Friends, foes, Church of the Living God. Lots of us struggle. But you know, what are you going to get God doing when you hear your voice called? Well, going through the scriptures like this, for the brother who asked me that, that question, with the scriptures that we looked at, I hope that answers your question. I hope that does. Okay? Anyway, um, I'm going to upload this now. It is 7.13 p.m. my time. I hope the Lord is glorified. The Lord be glorified. Thank you, brethren. Church of the Living God, I love you. And um, like I said before, I got a really, I was given a really good thing to work off of by a beloved brother, and I'm going to start getting on to that. So, I love you. You have a wonderful evening, and we will see you in the next video.